Ever since I started working with Hurricane Axe, every single keyboard I've looked at has been targeted towards gamers. I mean, that's what we cover, right? Gaming grade peripherals are typically at the leading edge of peripheral design, and you know, you can use them to pull double duties for both typing and fragging within online battles. But today we're taking a look at something different, and I'm loving it so far. Toshiba, now offering OCZ products that are awesome and affordable like the RD400, TR150 and VT180 that are backed by advanced warranty program, now stronger than ever under Toshiba. What you're looking at is the White Fox keyboard from Input Club. Now, why is it different? Well, that's because unlike many other keyboards, the White Fox is designed to be customized to your specifications. Rather than offering a one-size-fits-all solution, the approach here is much more personalized, but it also drives the cost up. I've seen the price vary from as low as $180 to $300, and while that is expensive for a keyboard, the first batch has already sold out, which is astonishing considering the company is only a year old. But there must be something behind such a successful launch, and I intend to find out what it is. Input Club's White Fox represents the end result of a collaboration project between Matteo Spillini, who is one of the industry's most knowledgeable keyboard addicts, Mastrop, and Input Club. Uh, it almost took a year to finalize the design of this beauty, and it looks freaking awesome in person. So what exactly is the White Fox? It is a keyboard designed from ground up to be compact, but infinitely customizable to suit whoever's buying it. You can buy either a pre-configured option or buy separate kits to make it truly your own. Uh, there's the option to have Cherry MX Blue, Brown, Clear, Green, Red and White switches along with Gatoron, Red, Blue, Brown, Green and Clear options. Yes, you will need to know which switches are best suited for your needs before buying, but that's the fun part. If you're planning to build this keyboard, there are six different plate layouts to pick from, but they only require one PCB. Here's a comparison to my Nexus 6P, so hopefully you can get a rough idea as to how compact this thing is. The keyboard screams premium build quality. Since it's made from a CNC anodized aluminum body and features die sublimated PBT keys, I have never felt any keyboard like this in my life and it's surprisingly heavy for such a compact form factor. Plastic keyboards now feel a bit cheap to me now. I love the simple and elegant design too. Once again, considering the compact layout, this cannot be considered a fully fledged gaming keyboard, but rather something that fits in an office space, or if you'd like to carry a mechanical keyboard around, this can easily fit in a backpack or airplay carry-on. But that doesn't mean it isn't highly adaptable though, since even Input Club's pre-configured layouts allow for plenty of added functionality through secondary function keys. The cable is detachable and braided. Both connectors are gold plated and I appreciate its design which complements the white and blue color scheme. I just wish the cable was a bit longer, especially if it's being connected to the rear IO of your PC. A quick fix to this would be to route the cable through a USB hub and that should clear up the clutter fairly well. There are a few extra goodies that come along with the keyboard too and that's above and beyond customizability that Input Club offers before you buy. For example, if you prefer to adjust the keyboard's height, you can install the included front feet by removing the 8 top mounted screws by using the included allen key. Notice the attention to detail on these custom feet. They are rock solid given the metal construction, but if you prefer to lay the keyboard down completely flat without them, you can use the included 3M rubber feet to prevent it from moving. Oddly enough, I was only able to find 3 of them in the box. The White Fox feels like a keyboard placed on top of a pure aluminum slab. The integrated white PCB features basic LED lighting, but you won't find any fancy lighting effects. The keys aren't transparent, so light can't shine through them, but the effect still looks really good. But here comes the best part. I swapped out the keycaps from my old Rush G1 gaming keyboard, and it looked great with the LEDs on. This alone opens the White Fox up for a variety of custom keycap selections. But for now, let's just take a moment to admire this beautiful keyboard. If you'd like to build this keyboard from scratch, you can purchase the DIY kit. Uh, there are a variety of key switch options like I mentioned before, and once you've chosen, it's just a matter of installing the switches onto the frame and soldering the pins of the switches to the PCB. There's a whole video guide on Input Club's YouTube channel, so I highly suggest referring to that before you begin. Like I said before, 
This isn't meant for novices and customizing the white fox outside the pre-configured options could be a daunting challenge for some folks. This is a plug and play keyboard, so technically it doesn't need any driver software to operate, but if you want to take things to the next level, you've got to manually program commands to the keys. The steps are quite simple. You plug in the keyboard and press the flash button behind the keyboard using the Allen key. This enables flashing mode and you'll notice the LEDs on the keyboard turned off. Download the first program according to the online instructions. This is called Zadig. I might be saying this wrong. Once the software detects the white fox, install the driver. Once that's done, open up the online configurator tool. This is the best part for me personally. As you can see, there's a physical layout of the keyboard, followed by a different set of commands that you can program to the keys. You'll notice that there are seven different command layers that can be added on top of the white fox. I didn't use all of them. What I needed were the basics like media playback commands and function keys. If you decide to use multiple layers, just remember to assign the small F keys to any key. By default, the Fox key or F1 enables layer one. So that's where I have most of my commands programmed. Just remember F2 to F7 are directly linked with layers two to seven respectively. There are also other special keys like lock and latch. When you enable lock one, the keyboard permanently locks to layer one. The same story applies from lock two to lock seven. It won't go back to the main keyboard layout until the lock key is pressed again. Meanwhile, latch is similar to lock. The main difference is that as soon as you press any key, whether that's assigned or not, all latched function layers will be removed. It takes some time to play around with these functions and the possibilities of programming commands are endless. Once you download the firmware, flash the keyboard according to the instructions on the website and that's it. Now you may ask why didn't Input Club include a genuine driver software that could have done all of this within just a few steps and I totally agree with you. But think of it this way, people who have invested into this ecosystem can start sharing layouts within the community uh, and this opens a huge opportunity for game developers so they can start including or adding special commands that you can program onto the white fox or any other keyboard that supports this process. My experience using the white fox for the first day was tough. You have to consider I'm coming from a fully sized gaming keyboard armed with a wrist rest. So it took me a full day to actually get used to the more condensed design. But after a few days, I was up and running. Given the compact form factor, pretty much all the keys were easily accessible by my fingertips for quick typing. The slightly inclined shape also takes a whole lot of stress from your arm. I'll admit, I did miss the numpad and the F9 keys that I pretty much use all the time for After Effects. Uh, but for general typing experience, the White Fox is simply awesome. Uh, it may not be great for folks with larger hands though. I received the model with Cherry MX blue switches, which is definitely a change for me coming from MX Reds. Take good notes though, these switches are loud. The actuations are a lot smoother, giving you a little bit of resistance, but I prefer using these for typing. Let's take a listen. The lack of USB ports is a disadvantage here and there were two of them on the G1 Rush. It was a nice addition for charging my phone, plugging in a thumb drive, etc. Perhaps we could expect to come back in the next revision. Also, don't confuse yourself thinking the Fox key acting as a Windows button. At first I thought it was, but I realized that it was set as the F1 key in order to access layer one. Uh, for Windows keyless users, this is an option, but for those needing the Windows key, L GUI is the right code and as you can see i have it set to the left alt key so if i need to access this function i would have to press the f1 key and then the left alt key white fox configurator could label better you see these are some of the quirks that you will have to work around with but think about it if someone jumps into a new ecosystem it takes time to get used to and personally i don't consider any of these as deal breaking features but what about you i want to start an open discussion would you consider a mechanical keyboard of this caliber given the price? Personally, I'm glad I jumped into this bandwagon because my love for keyboards has just become stronger uh, and it makes me realize that customizations for keyboard are endless and there's an entire community of keyboard enthusiasts out there looking to build or create the ultimate, simple, and the most comfortable keyboard. The White Fox is just the beginning. Well, those have been my thoughts on the White Fox from Input Club, White Fox.
man, I love that name. I still can't get over it. It's so cool. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and, you know, let me know what you guys think about this keyboard. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I'm Ybor with Hurricane X, and we'll see you in the next one.